In our previous video, we looked at the concept of fair division. We talked about fair shares and how those can vary from one player to the next. And we looked at some definitions and terms that will um, allow us to understand the fair division concept. So we're going to start this video with talking about why we need to do this. And in the real world, if you have a group of friends who are sitting down to share a pizza, they're probably going to be able to discuss what they like, which piece they want. They're going to be able to come to some kind of compromise to where everybody feels like they got a fair share of the pizza. However, there are lots of contexts where the players cannot be trusted to approach it in a non-emotional way. And therefore, we need to have some kind of method that we can follow, such as in divorce settlements or dividing inheritances, where we have a process we can follow and make sure that each player receives a fair share. A real life example of where this might come into play, um, we have Henry and his two brothers who broke up a 40 year partnership using the ideas of fair division and they were able to divide three billion dollars worth of real estate holdings in New York City without any lawsuits or bad blood because they took the emotion out of it and simply used their fair division ideas. So let's look at an example where Henry, Tom, and Fred are splitting up their partnership in various assets of unspecific value. The set of assets, S, is divided into three shares, share one, share two, and share three, which I'm going to call S1, S2, and S3. And then the three men's value of the shares is represented by this table. So you can see that Henry places a value of 32% of the total worth of the assets on share one. 31% of the total value of the assets on share two, and 37% on share three. So if we were to add these together, we should get what? Well, remember, they represent the total value of the assets. So if we were to add them together, we should get 100% because 100% represents the total value of the assets. You can see that Tom valued share two the same, but shares one and three differently than Henry did. And you can see that Fred actually valued all three shares with the same value. And so what that tells us is that Fred is the one who divided the assets into the three shares. Because when you're the divider, you're automatically going to divide the shares so that regardless of which one you get, you're going to be guaranteed a fair share. So anytime that we see a player who has an equal value on all shares, that tells us that they were the divider in that particular scenario. So the question becomes, well, which of these are fair shares for each player? And in order to determine that, the first thing we have to do is determine, well, what is a fair share value for each player? Well, remember that we don't have specific monetary values. What we have is percentage values. So if 100% represents the entire set of assets and there are three players, then each player is entitled to one third of that or one third of 100%, which is 33 and a third percent. So we know that their fair share is 33 and a third percent. We can use the values that they have placed on each share to then determine which shares are fair to each player. So if we look at Henry, notice that the only share that has a value of 33 and a third percent or higher is share three. Therefore, for Henry, share three is the only fair share for him. For Tom, notice that both shares one and shares three have a value of 33 and a third percent or higher. So for Tom, shares one and shares three are both fair shares. And then for Fred, all of them have a value of 33 and a third percent or higher. So for Fred, any of the shares would be a fair share. So now that we know each player's fair share, what we need to do is to decide how are we going to create a fair division? Well, if you remember, Henry only had one share that was considered fair to him, so we have to give that share to Henry. So now based on that, nobody else can get share three. So if we look at Tom, Tom's fair shares were uh, share one and share three. Well, share three is no longer an option, so that means Tom has to get share one, 
And what does that leave for Fred? Well, that leaves Fred with share two. And since Fred had all the shares valued equally, they were all fair shares to him, and therefore it's fine to give him share two. So our fair division would be that Henry gets share three, Tom gets share one, and Fred gets share two. Now, note that this does not mean that every party is completely happy, because if we look at Tom, Tom placed a higher value on share three, which means he would have rather had share three. So we're not guaranteeing that this is going to be an envy-free division, but we are guaranteeing that it is a proportional fair division. So now let's look at another example. We have four friends that are sharing a collection of items. The set of assets S is divided into four shares, S1, S2, S3, S4. The values of the slices for each player are shown in the table. So you'll notice that this looks very much like our previous example, except that we have missing boxes. So we don't have values for one of the shares for each of the players. So how are we gonna determine this unknown value? Well, if you remember that the total value in a player's eyes has to represent what? It has to represent 100% because that's the total value. So to find the value of the missing share, we simply take the 100% and we subtract the value of each of the other three shares. So for Mark, it would be 100 minus 20 minus 32 minus 28, which would give us a fair share of 20%. For, I'm sorry, not a, not a fair share, but a, a value of 20% for share four. We would do the same thing for Tim and find that he places a value of 25% on share two, Maya 30% on share three, and Kelly 24% on share one. Also note that Tim places the same value on all four shares. So what does that tell us about Tim? It tells us that he was the divider in this case. So now that we know the value of each share in each player's eyes, let's figure out what is a fair share for this problem. So to do that, well, 100% divided by the number of players, which in this case is four. So 100% divided by four, our fair share would be 25%. So let's look at Kelly and figure out which shares are a fair share to Kelly. Well, remember, she's entitled to 25%. So we're looking for any share that has a value of 25% or higher. Share one does not, so that is not a fair share. Share two is 26%, which is 25% or higher, so that would be a fair share. Share three is not, and share four is. So Kelly's fair shares would be share two and share four. And we call S2, S4 her bid set, because those are the shares that she would be happy with because they are a fair share to her. So now let's find the fair shares for each player. Well, remember, each player is entitled to 25%. So for Mark, shares two and three are 25% or higher. So shares two and three would be fair shares for Mark. For Tim, they are all 25% or higher, so all four shares would be a, four share, a fair share for Tim. For Maya, only shares three and four are 25% or higher, so for Maya, only shares three and four would be fair shares. And for Kelly, it would be share two and share four. So now that we know the bid set for each player, or in other words, which shares are fair shares for those players, now we're ready to find some fair divisions. Well, in a lot of cases, there's only one fair division, but in this case, there's actually two different ways that we could divide these shares up so that everybody still gets a fair share. So let's start by giving Mark share two. And I randomly chose to give him share two first. So if I give Mark share two, then that means Kelly can't get share two. So what do we have to give Kelly in order for her to get a fair share? Well, we have to give her share four because that's the only other share that's a fair share for her. And that means that Maya can't get share four and therefore she's gonna get share three. And what does that leave for Tim? Well, it leaves Tim with share one. So one fair division would be to give Mark share two, Tim share one, Maya share three, and Kelly share four.
But that's not the only fair division, because what if I chose to give Mark share 3 instead? Well, if Mark gets share 3, then that means Maya has to get what? Well, this one's gone, so she has to get share 4. And that means that this option's gone, so Kelly has to get share 2. And then that still leaves Tim with share 1. So there are two different examples of a fair division in this case. Note that in each of these divisions that each player receives a proportional fair share, so one-fourth of their total value, so they are both fair divisions. Remember that this does not mean that each player receives their preferred share or even equal shares, but each does receive at least a fair share. So let's look at another example here. We have three friends who are sharing a large bag of candy that has been randomly split into three bowls. The values of the entire bag in each bowl from the perspective of each player is below. Find a fair share division. Now notice that this differs in a couple different ways. One, it's been randomly split, so there, none of the players are the actual divider in this case. And two, notice that we are not given a percentage of the total value. Instead, we are actually given a monetary value for each bowl in each player's eyes. So rather than taking 100% and dividing by three players to find a fair share, we're actually going to have to find each player's total value of the candy and divide that by one-third to find the fair share. So to find their total value, we simply add across. So we're going to take 450 plus 75 plus 275, and we see that Amy has a total value of $8. Boris is 1 plus 1 plus 2, or $4. And Chelsea has a total value of 175 plus 250 plus 175 or $6. So now that we know each player's total value, they are entitled to one third of that total value. So Amy is entitled to one third of $8 or 267. Boris is entitled to one third of $4 or $1.33. And Chelsea is entitled to one third of $6 or $2. So notice that in this case, each player's fair share is different, and therefore we're going to have to compare the, the value of each bowl to their fair share to figure out which bowls are fair share in their eyes. So Amy's bid set would be bowl one and bowl three because those are both 267 or higher. Boris's would be bowl three only because that's the only bowl that has a value of 133 or higher in his eyes. And then Chelsea's would be bowl two. So now based on this, a fair division, well, we have to give Chelsea bid or bowl two. We have to give Boris bowl three. So can Amy still get a fair share? Yes, because bowl one is a fair share to her. So a fair division would be Amy bowl one, Boris bowl three, and Chelsea bowl two. So a specific method that we can use when we are trying to divide things fairly is the lone divider method where we have n number of players. So the initial thing is to randomly have somebody be chosen as the divider to divide the assets up. Um, then we're going to have each of the players declare which fair, which shares are fair to them. And the way they do that is they bid, and then we're going to calculate which are fair shares. Notice that the bidding is done independently and it's done privately. So nobody else is going to know what I valued that piece as. They're only going to know their own value. And then we're going to give each party a fair share if possible. And if two or more parties want the same piece and no others, then we're going to give an uncontested piece to the divider, combine the rest of the pieces, and repeat the procedure. So let's look at Huey, Dewey, and Louie. They are trying to share an inheritance. The executor has randomly chose one of them to divide the assets into three shares. Who would that be? That would be Louie in this case. So who was the divider? Louis, because each of the shares are worth the same value to Louis. And each of them are entitled to one third of the total value or 33 and a third percent. So for Huey, share one would be a fair share. For Dewey, share one and share two would be a fair share. And for Louis, all three shares would be fair. So a fair division 
would be give Huey share one, Dewey share two, and Louie share three.